What is up everybody? Phil Mendoza with Alpha Bow Hunting in another DBAP show. So, uh, if you haven't caught the first DBAP show, go back and, and check that out. Um, personal stories there, uh, a little bit of uh, info as far as just kind of where I, how I learned and where I've gotten to with some basic boring principles, right? Not very sexy. It's not the FOC topics, nothing like that, but we're really trying to dive into the mental side of archery and philosophy, uh, methodologies, and help encourage you to grow that way as well as everywhere else. This, this topic, and, and if it looks like I'm wearing the same clothes as the last one, I am because I recorded multiple episodes back to back. So in case you're wondering, um, yeah, I do shower. But anyway, this topic, I really want to talk about something that new bow hunters and even bow hunters that have been shooting for a long time i've i've had many conversations where the perception of pin movement is that as you get better or professional archers or the goal is to have zero pin movement and i'm going to promise you right now that's never going to be the case everyone has pin movement Everyone, everyone, everyone has pin movement. Um, the short time that I got to shoot the pro class in the, at, at the ASAs, you know, I spent a lot of time, even on the practice range before that, the year before that, as I shot in the semi-pro division, watching over the shoulder, watching somebody shoot and looking at their pins. And obviously I'm not looking at the animal as they are, but I'd see their pins on a, on a tree branch or a leaf or something. And because when you look at their bow, looks like their bow is holding almost perfectly still. But you look at through their sight, their, their sight housing and their pin or, and or lens or whatever they're shooting, and you see slight movement. But it's usually directional controlled, smaller, slower movements. And a lot of what, how, how they achieve that and get to that, I, I don't wanna say there's misconceptions, but maybe you know for new archers out there, or archers that have been doing it a long time and are looking for a tip or looking for something as to, hey, how can I get better with this? I'm gonna tell you there's not any one answer on how to get there, but there's a lot of little things you can do to help achieve slower pin movement, tighter pin movement, and, um, and steadier pin movement. Because we all know, uh, you know, the, the evil word, the evil two words, target panic and, and uh, getting punchy on the trigger and whether that leads to buck fever, whatever the case is, that can be caused because people begin to anticipate the shot. You know, they do the drive-by deal. They start on the left side of the target. They start getting on the close to the spot, boom, and they hammer on the trigger or top to bottom, left to right, whatever. You start freezing under because what happens if you start to, to do the drive-by deal, you know, you're not afraid of actually your pin floating in the center and there's movement and if people aren't used to that and understand that that's normal that's what you want to achieve that's what you want to see they try to give it direction and they start to again come in from the left or right up or down after you do that so many times the anxiety starts to kick in your timings off and you start to freeze on this right before the spot or above the spot or below the spot and that causes the whole world of problems Knowing that if you can get back to understanding that, again, everybody has pin movement. I, I've said it many times before, but I'll say it again. I, I wish that tension style releases weren't as expensive as they are because I would encourage people to buy a release like that as their first release, assuming they're shooting a compound bow with, with the release. So that way you can learn what it is to have that kind of push-pull style shot with your pin just floating, you know, whether it's initially an eight inch circle that, that your pin's floating, or it ends up being a little inch and a half, two inch circle, or what, you know, whatever the case is, there's gonna be pin movement. So understanding that that push-pull shot, adding tension, easing tension into the shot while your pin's floating is what you should be uh, striving to achieve. So things to, help get to that place. Obviously some of the easy ones, right? Stabilizer, balance, setup. Um, if you have a bow that your draw length is perfect, 
Um, and what I mean by that is I can shoot a bow at 28 and a half inch and I can shoot a bow at 29 inch and I can shoot it pretty well on level flat ground. As I start getting outside, awkward position, uphill, downhill, rotating at the trunk, that 29 inch in some cases gets to be, especially when I'm shooting uphill, gets to be where I can't push, pull, drive through and expand through that shot. So I need to be kind of in the middle more that, and I'll, I'll tune my bow and, and set it up to where it's about 28 and three quarter, uh, depending whether I have a grip on or there are a lot of moving parts for me. That gives me a little bit of room to expand into the shot, give a little bit of ease tension, push pull, execute that cell shot. That's the shot I desire to shoot because it gives me the best accuracy. In addition to that, having my, my draw length ideally set, this is something you may have to play with, um, you know, whether you're, again, in or out, half inch to, to one way or the other on, on your modules or cams, whatever it is, to test this. And then as you start to incorporate the stabilizer setup, there can be, there is, so, there is such a thing as too much weight and there is such a thing as not enough weight. So understanding that finding that balance, that happy balance point to where you see your pin going from maybe, you know, all over the place in a six inch pattern at 20 yards down to a slower pattern of maybe three inches at 20 yards, because maybe that's what, what your capabilities are. That's progress. That's improved progress. In addition to that, if you are shooting, whether you're shooting a hinge or an index finger, and if you're able to shoot that push-pull surprise style shot, introducing slight tension into the shot, you're going to give that pin movement some direction right before the shot breaks towards the center of the target. You're always fighting for the center, always fighting for the center. So those couple moving parts, let off is another one. This is a huge one that you know, the 85 and up to 90% bows, uh, let off bows that can get out there. In my opinion, that gives you an empty float feel. You're basically holding a bow. You've got mass weight that you're holding up. And if you're listening, I, I know it's a little difficult because I'm, I'm actually on the video. I'm kind of showing what things kind of look like. But if, you're, if you've got a bow that's 85, 90% let off, yeah, you can draw and hold that bow all day long because there's not a lot of, of tension on the back end of it. But when you need to start giving it direction and, and aiming, that's where that, in my opinion, this is the best way I can articulate it, it feels like an empty float. There's no rhyme or reason as to what my pin's doing, it's just floating in there because there's not enough tension that I can introduce into the system to give it some direction. That's where you see target archers shooting 65, 70, sometimes 75% let off because there's more holding weight. You've got the mass weight of the bow, with the stabilizer setup that's included in that mass weight. In addition to that, you have the push-pull, the, the, the directional tension that you have with the weight of the bow. All those things are kind of working together to stabilize and slow down your pin movement. Now, once you kind of find that happy meet and that balance point, the thing I'll say is from a bow hunting standpoint, you have the practicality aspect that comes into play. So. There's that whole thing, you know, you don't want to shoot. We're trying to mesh these worlds between target archery and bow hunting. You know, target archery, you see people shooting 30, 32, 33 inch front stabilizer length. Well, obviously we're not going to take that in the woods with this. I find myself in that 10 to 15, or excuse me, 10 to 12 inch. I've hunted with up to a 15 inch stabilizer, but 10 to 12 inch is kind of good for me. I'm able to achieve a pretty tight hold pattern with a 12 inch bar. Um, I know that if I, if I took that bar length out a little bit longer, I can lose a little bit of weight and, and achieve potentially an even smaller pin hold, but that's not practical for what I want to do bow hunting wise. Now how that lends itself into competition and, and, and even something like an alpha bow hunting challenge, that the, the tournaments that we do, you've got a backpack on, adjusting your, you know, with your, your posture, and then we're in encouraging you to move through the course a little bit quicker if you can and elevate your heart rate all those moving parts now introduce more movement into your setup so how then do you come back to where when you're shooting in a perfect condition and your pin movement is very tight very small whether you're hunting or you're doing something like a tournament that we're doing hiking up a hill trying to get a position for a position for a shot how do you then again control that heart rate and, and work on that tight hold. Well, 
I don't, there's not, there's not a lot of uh, magic to it. You, you, you need to try to be in decent shape. I'm not saying you have to be in whitetail fit shape, you know, like Joel and some Cam Haynes, some of these guys that are just top, top shape. But you do need to have taken that into consideration and maybe, you know, go hike around a little bit, shoot a few arrows, see what that feels like before you actually get out into the woods. If you have no idea what that feels like, odds are you're not going to be able to make a good shot in that scenario. But in addition to that, if you incorporate a little bit of physical activity, and what I personally do is I'm just hiking, jogging, running, whatever I'm doing, I don't ever like to do a whole bunch of push-ups, burpees, pull-ups right before I shoot my bow because in most cases, in, well, in a hunting situation, I'm not going to sit there and be doing pull-ups from a tree stand right before a deer comes in. So my upper body's not going to be gassed out like it would be from doing pull-ups or push-ups. My lower body, um, you know, hiking the woods is, is very practical and realistic that those might be a little bit tired. And that's really not going to affect my, you know, as I shoot my bow as much. But introduce a little bit of, of, of physical activity with common sense um, that's practical for you as you shoot and see how that feels. The last thing I want to say with this topic is your breathing. Um, I, I've done videos in the past, and again, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be touching on some subjects that I've covered in the past. You may have heard this up before, but breathing during the shot. You know, um, I personally, when I'm breathing, you know, I'm following, I, I'm allowing myself to breathe as I'm going through my shot sequence, anchor, secondary reference. I'm looking through my housing and my peep. My peep in my housing, getting everything leveled up, and I'm starting to get my pins close to my target. At that point where I'm semi-steady and my pins are getting close, I need to start thinking about getting that, that breath to where I can pause that breath for a couple seconds to really stabilize those pins and execute that shot. Now when I say pause my breath, I'm not saying as soon as you draw back an anchor start holding your breath because by potentially 8, 10, 12, 15 seconds, depending on how long it takes you to execute, you might be passing out by that point. So that's where I'm saying you need to breathe through your shot process as you're building up and you're leading up to the shot and getting ready and you're getting closer. Then I'm starting to big breath, half out, pause, or exhale all the way, inhale half and pause. Whatever you, whatever method you do, I always, I don't like to be completely exhausted of air or full of air when I pause, I like to kind of be in the middle. And at that point, again, it's pause, squeeze, 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 boom, shot breaks off. So I've got that rhythm down now where I'm in that three to four second range from when my pins really start to stabilize in that area and I start to push, pull, and execute that shot. Very important here not to have a super hair trigger when you're doing this kind of practice or when you're really working on this stuff or for anything for that matter. I really feel like a hair trigger in archery is a bad thing. So start to think about getting a little tension on your release and being able to get your finger on the trigger or take the safety off, take your thumb off the barrel, whatever type of release you're shooting as you're going through this, you shouldn't be fearful that that release is going to pop off because you're breathing. Okay, It needs to be set a little bit slower so you can actually go through that those that breath get yourself into that process follow your shot sequence hone it in pause one two three four five whatever your your shot routine delivers or, or demands then you're able to do that but practice for it so the breath during the shot pausing it is the ultimate ultimate final step to slowing that pin movement down okay um, and again, not 10, 12, 15 seconds, three to five seconds. This is where tools like the Mantis and other things, writing things down, understanding what your, how long your shot process takes, the setup, the actual aiming, all that. Those type of things are very practical here for understanding yourself. You want to you, you wanna be successful at, a, at a, an event like what we do at the, Arch at the Alpha Bow Hunting Challenge or in the field if you're a run and gun type of person hunting the West hiking hills and really getting after animal spot and stock. You need to be able to control that breathing down and understand what your pin movement looks like and understand how to slow the pin movement down. So that's kind of the topic today. 
like I said, a lot of little things you can do. Really hone in your draw length, make sure it's not too long, make sure it's not too short, obviously, but understand that that's gonna, that allows you to, in all shot positions, scenarios, that you can still execute a good push-pull style shot. In addition to that, proper stabilizer balance. Making sure the bow's not too heavy, where you're sitting there pausing your breath and that pin's holding steady, and all of a sudden, boop, dips out the bottom, right? Because as soon as that, that pin dips because of fatigue or whatever the case is, odds are if you're shooting a hinge style release or if your trigger is set just light enough, as soon as that pin bobbles down, the bow bobbles down, it's, gonna, it's going to create enough distance to sometimes make that shot go off, and there you are hitting low. So not too much weight. But play with that, play with the balance of the weight, you know, test these things out. Let off, super important, you know, make sure you're considering, again, practicality. I'm not saying to go hunt, hunting with a 70% let off bow. In my opinion, 80% is a good sweet spot. That's where I shoot 75 to 80 pounds of, of draw weight because I can increase my holding weight a little bit more um, to achieve the holding weight that I want to give me a good tight hold pattern. I can also do that by going to 75 75%, but when I look at the, the whole spectrum thing again, I'm gaining more benefits by adding a little bit more draw weight and getting a little bit flatter trajectory or more speed. I can heavy up my arrow, whatever. So take into account all those moving parts and then start to use some real life scenarios as you practice. Again, maybe it's just for you hiking back and forth, walking around the yard. Maybe you're gonna do a couple of jumping jacks, whatever the case is, get your heart rate up a little bit so you can understand what that pin movement looks like with when, when your anxiety level is up and adrenaline's flowing, and then understand what it takes to calm it back down, poss possibly have a pause in your breath for a few seconds as you execute that shot. That's the topic for today. I hope you enjoyed, um, again, this, this different format, the more podcast style format. Again, this is on YouTube if you're watching it, audio and the other platforms. Um, we really appreciate it. If, you, if you feel like you're getting value from what we have to say and what we have to share and, and uh, you know, like and subscribe, you know, tell a friend about it and uh, you know, follow us on our, on our platforms on, on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, um, comment, you know, leave some comments. There's a bunch of topics that uh, I've, like I said, talking to people, I've talked about them, whether they're in, in workshop seminars or on videos that we've done. There's still a lot of topics that Bow hunters, you know, whether they've never heard them before or they're new, new to, to our channel, want to hear our perspective on it, uh, new bow hunters in general, there's, there's always uh, room to, you know, highlight a topic that's been covered before. So thanks again for checking out the DBAP, DBAP show on Alpha Bow Hunting, and we will see you all soon.